District Judge Aileen Cannon has been delaying Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago classified documents case at every turn. Now she's like acting like a little Supreme Court, uh, entertaining the idea of overturning settled precedent, hearing Trump's claim that special counsel Jack Smith doesn't have the authority to prosecute him. So what exactly is Judge Cannon really up to? Melissa Murray is a professor at Law at New York University, co-host of the Strict Scrutiny podcast, along with Lee Littman and my wife, Kate Shaw. Lisa Rubin, of course, is an MSNBC legal correspondent, and they both join me now. I keep trying to check myself on this. Like, obviously, this case does present interesting issues, and it is somewhat unprecedented. So it's not like, oh, this is all by the book. But this particular claim, the special counsel is unconstitutional for a district judge operating under Supreme Court pre precedent, Melissa, like, it should be pretty straightforward, right? Girl, stay in your lane. <laughs> stay in your lane. So, yes, um, not only has the issue of whether the special counsel comports with the strictures of constitutional law, that's been settled. That's been addressed in multiple courts. Settled. We don't have to rehash that. And even if we were to rehash it, if we were to revisit it, she's not the venue to do that. Like, she can make a decision on it, but like this whole parade of experts, amici, having people who are not actual parties to the litigation come in to argue, all of that seems a little bit off when, in fact, if this were an actual issue, it would ultimately be decided by the Supreme Court, not by a district court judge in Fort Pierce, Florida. Did seem to be skepticism from Judge Cannon on uh, the arguments from Team Trump. And at the same time, she seemed really interested in grilling prosecutors about just how closely uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland monitors Jack Smith's investigation. I, I wonder what you made of both pieces. What does it suggest to you? Boy, Alicia, what I made of that is it sounded like a political talking point, mm -hmm. not a matter of legal significance. As Mr. Seligman just said, it is legally irrelevant. Either the special counsel procedures are lawful and appropriate, and they are, as every court has ruled in recent years, or they're not. And, you know, the first thing I thought of when I saw that she was, I believe, stepping a toe over the separation of powers line by beginning to ask legally irrelevant questions that you can see how they might help Donald Trump paint the picture that somehow Merrick Garland and Joe Biden are more involved in his prosecution than they ought to be. The first thing I thought of is this feels a lot like when Judge Cannon got involved in this special master nonsense, which the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals said Judge Cannon, you abused your judicial discretion by doing what you did because you had no right to interfere in an ongoing DOJ investigation. But she did, and she did it to the extreme advantage of Donald Trump. That has echoes of what we heard yeah. in that Florida courtroom where she was probing how much interaction Jack Smith and Merrick Garland might be having. Well, and Gail Bovee claimed that the existence of a special counsel amounted to a shadow government. Cannon replied, that sounds very ominous, but what does that mean? Trump's lawyer, of course, did not answer Cannon's question. He just repeated his argument that Jack Smith was somehow inappropriately appointed. But his failure to answer does not matter in the end. Judge Cannon's decision to entertain such novel arguments and to eat up more time on the clock was in itself another in a series of wins for Trump and his defense. The question now, will that winning streak continue? Joining me now, Matthew Seligman, a lawyer and legal scholar who presented oral arguments in front of Judge Cannon today. Thank you so much for being with us on what I know was a busy day for you. You argued in front of Judge Cannon today that counter to Trump's lawyer's argument, Jack Smith's appointment was indeed constitutional. The main points you were trying to get across. Well, first, thanks for having me. Uh, so the main points to get across here are that there are decades of precedent that established that the special counsel is constitutional and that Jack Smith was lawfully appointed. Every court who have ever addressed this issue in similar circumstances, in identical circumstances, has held that. So for Judge Cannon to entertain this issue, well, if she rules ultimately that uh, Jack Smith was uh, unconstitutionally appointed, that would be an extraordinary breach with precedent. And I'm confident that ultimately both the 11th Circuit and and the Supreme Court would swiftly reverse her. The council will come in and conduct investigations of executive branch officials. Who said that? For Kavanaugh. So even a baby judge who's new to this mm -hmm. 
knows as a district court judge, you got to follow what the Supreme Court says. So, you know, I come back to like, what's actually going on here? Right. We've now had you know, about a year of Judge Cannon and seeing what she's up to. And it seems like she's got a playbook here. The first is distract. Take these very simple legal issues and make them seem really complicated. So we're not talking about Donald Trump willfully retaining classified information in the nation's secrets. We're talking about Merrick Garland's authority and Jack Smith. So distraction is step one. Step two is use these complications, use these supposed complications to delay, to say, I need briefing, I need argument, bring in outside parties, everybody come in and say what you need to say. And, and then after the argument, we're going to have more briefing. And then I don't have to set a trial date because I've got so much I need to deal with. That's step two. And step three is disparage the prosecutors along the way. Take every opportunity you can to scold them. And every time she runs this playbook, and we've seen it again and again, Donald Trump wins. So I have been one of the people before who kind of gave her the benefit of the doubt and said, well, maybe she's just incompetent. Maybe she's just inex inexperienced. But no, this is very calculated. And it, it shows bias because every time Donald Trump wins when she runs the play. Uncle, this is this is such a surreal kind of weird moment for everybody. I mean, I, I think even people who are just sort of, you know, adjacent to this kind of look at this and go, well, this is kind of Shut and dry, you know, shut and open and shut in this case. I wanted to hear some of Trump's own words, uh, admitting he knows mat the materials in this classified documents case was classified. Let's take a listen. Mm. Yes, you did. Well, this was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to deed figure lesson, out right? a, a, yeah. See, as president, I could have deed less. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't, you know, but this is Yeah, now, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. I mean, it's so, I'm, look, we here and I have a, and you probably almost didn't believe me, but now you believe me. No, it's, I believe It's incredible, you. right? No. They, hey, bring some, uh, bring some cokes in, please. As president... I could have declassified it. Now I can't, you know, but this is classified out of his own mouth. So what about this case or this audio alone does J Judge Eileen Cannon not get in terms of moving this trial along? Yeah, well, look, I'm undone. I I, I, we're, we're, we're undone here. I mean, look, the actual facts of the case, or at least the allegations, if we assume that they're true, have been um, quite bad for Trump the whole time, particularly that piece of evidence and others. Um, what is keeping this case from going to trial is a very complicated question. Like, as Christy alluded to, there's been sort of an ongoing debate for months now about, you know, is Judge Cannon sort of in the tank mm -hmm. for Trump or like trying to become a Supreme Court justice in a second Trump term? Mm -hmm. Is she inexperienced or perhaps uh, in over her head? Um, I don't know that we really need to come down one side. I kind of think it may be a little from column A and column B, depending on, right. uh, on the situation. But I think the key thing at this point is like, you know, this case is not going to go to trial before November. Um, and we kind of all just have to sort of deal with that for better or worse. Um, and um, hopefully, you know, they will come to some sort of orderly resolution. She's holding the first of three days worth of hearings. So I think one optimistic way of looking at this is this is she is sort of slowly trying to move her way through this. But I will say one last point. Um, it would have been much better for everyone, except perhaps for Donald Trump, if she had taken the advice of those two judges who suggested to her that she give up this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. according to New York Times, and I'm just like, well, what is going, she thought she was going to get her time in the sun, I think, and it is, it is shining, it's hot. It's hot. And I don't know how it's going to come down. I mean, Christy, I was, I would like to know why Judge Cannon grilled the federal prosecutors about um, if Merrick Garland is overseeing their work. She had a she had a lot of questions. I mean, let's pull this up. She 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 grilled the prosecutors on Friday and how closely Attorney General Merrick Garland was looking at what they are doing, even though Jack Smith and his entire team have been clear that he's an independent, you know, operation and that is why a special prosecutor exists why why is she asking questions that we seemingly know the answers to already yeah so i 
again, trying to view this in the most charitable way to her. She is looking at whether or not in the appointments clause, you know, Merrick Garland, the AG, is allowed to appoint an inferior officer, right? So that would seem to suggest that there is at least some level of oversight. And But she was asking very specific questions about, well, did Merrick Garland sign off and approve on the indictment? And the prosecutor rightly said, well, we're not going to get, you know, based on policy and like, we're not going to get into our internal deliberations with you. She doesn't get to know necessarily the specifics of what went on in DOJ, but she does know what the regulations say, which is, you know, Merrick Garland did have the opportunity if he thought Jack Smith was going rogue, if he was doing something that was completely inappropriate or contrary to DOJ guidelines to block his action. So that does show that, yes, he was an inferior officer. He ultimately was overseen, even if not in every aspect of day-to-day -day supervision of this case, there was ultimate oversight by the AG. And, and that's clear from the regulations. She didn't have to go into the details of what happened in this case. So folks, that's a gargantuan Saturday defeat for Trump. I know that some of the dumber MAGAs are celebrating, oh, we've maybe sufficiently delayed this trial from, from happening uh, as quickly as it should. But this is really cannon stepping in it and doing so in a way that puts Trump in danger, puts her own career in danger and all of that. Remember, the best Trump cronies are in the shadows. And whether that's cronies in his business world, cronies in his political uh, apparatus, or cronies on the in the legal system for him, they are at their best when they're in the shadows. One of the re this is all the, the irony. One of the reasons why someone like Mike Pence was a was was so effectively evil is he didn't take the spotlight from Trump until he refused to go along with the coup, right? Um, but so many of the, 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 whether we're talking about Green or, or Boebert or whatnot, they're, they're bad for Trump because they're, they, they are loyally evil to him and his vision, but they are clown shows. And Cannon is now a clown show. And what they've demonstrated is that her moves are so ridiculous, so absurd, that they put Trump in danger. And whether that's before, during, or after the election, when Biden crushes him, he'll still be in those legal crosshairs. And as noted, it goes crazy because it's not like she's making a decision where we might disagree, but reasonably so. As noted by Glenn, it's going so bad that it's going to go up to the appeals court and the Supreme Court that her moves have cost Donald Trump a big Sunday defeat, Saturday defeat, excuse me, as well.